said this court is not under an obligation to ferret out every instance of potential dishonesty from the witness because they total cowardly behavior. It's just cowardly. I hate to use that word. Like these guys, Fanny and Wade lied to this judge's face. And he wrote in his opinion, this court is not under an obligation to ferret out every instance of potential dishonesty. The state's argument that this fact requires this court to not hear the appeal is nonsensical. So Fanny says you can't even hear it. And you're saying, well, wait, well, how is the court of appeals going to decide what to do about it. They have to hear it before they can make a decision. No, you can't even hear it. Fannie Willis is trying to get Donald Trump's appeal dismissed and Trump's defense through Steve Sadow submitted their response. Fannie is still on the case. So to zoom out on the procedural history here, she has not been booted off the case. They did boot Nathan Wade out. They said there's too many bank robbers on this case, too much Fannie business happening here. So he's gone. Trump's defense submitted an appeal. They said this is ridiculous. Fanny is the person who clearly has a conflict of interest and so she needs to go. The court that the trial is happening in, Judge McAfee granted permission to appeal and the Court of Appeals granted permission to accept the appeal. So the lower court passed the ball. They caught it at the higher level court. The appeal is moving forward. Previously here on our channel, we read through Fanny's request to reverse the acceptance of the appeal. She said that, hey, the appeal was imprudently taken and you Court of Appeals should reverse yourself and reverse your acceptance of the appeal. Now Trump's defense is responding to that request from Fannie, but it was largely missing the mark from our perspective. From Fannie's filing, she was just saying, you can't challenge what Judge McAfee said. The facts showed this and the facts showed that. And we said, well, that's a bunch of facts you listed out there, Fannie, but you're missing the point of the law. The law is not just about facts that some judge decided. It's about how the law applies to the facts to justify the legal conclusions. So if the law and the standard that Judge McAfee thought was appropriate is not legally accurate, the standard changes and how those facts are interpreted will change because we're looking through a different lens. So now Steve Sadow from Trump's defense has come out and submitted this filing, said, all right, here's my statement as lead counsel for President Trump in the Fulton County, Georgia case. It says, President Trump has filed his motion in opposition to Fannie's meritless motion to dismiss the interlocutory appeal, trying to get Fannie booted out of here. The Georgia Court of Appeals granted us the right to appeal this after due and proper consideration. And so now the state's Hail Mary motion is an obvious attempt to stop appellate review of Fannie Willis's misconduct. We are optimistic that the court will deny the motion and proceed to favorably decide the appeal on the merits. So Steve Sadow submitted this one in. Let's take a look at the filing and see what is inside. From Donald Trump's defense team, we've got Steve Sadow submitting this in the Court of Appeals, state of Georgia. It is Donald Trump's response to Fannie Fanny's motion trying to dismiss Trump's appeal. Cases Donald Trump versus the state of Georgia up on an interlocutory appeal because we're in the middle of a criminal trial and the RICO charges coming up from Judge McAfee's courtroom. Trump's defense says, all right, listen, Trump is now here responding in opposition to Fanny's motion. She wants to dismiss the appeal as being improvidently granted. In support of their joint position that the motion must be denied, President Trump shows the following says without citation to any applicable authority and we read her motion it was pretty bad what law is in here kind of recitation of the facts forgetting the fact that McAfee said that she has a very stinky odor of mendacity left a lot of that out but it was mostly just a book report so Fanny filed this Hail Mary motion to dismiss these meritorious appeals that we filed accusing this court very improvidently granted interlocutory review he put that in quotes because he wants to make the point known that that's the word she used, not ours. There is no procedural vehicle for the state to relitigate this court's sound decision. They already made their decision and decided to hear it on the merits. And so the state's attempt to do this is already conflicting with various statutes and other court rules. Saying Fanny, in her desperate bid to avoid disqualification of a deeply conflicted Fanny who is engaged in and continues to unapologetically engage in extrajudicial forensic misconduct. She keeps speaking. Here's another Fannie Willis speech they linked to. Last visited June 17th. She's out still in church screaming about this case. The state argues that the trial court's factual findings were not clearly erroneous. So Fannie's argument was, well, Judge McAfee's the judge. He can make decisions. He made a decision. There's no evidence to show that it was clearly erroneous, like it was obviously insane. So it stands. And unless you can overcome his decision with clearly erroneous evidence, which is a high standard, you're not going to get any recourse 
recourse from the Court of Appeals, and so it should have never been granted in the first place. Trump's defense says, according to Fannie Land, then this court is powerless to overturn the trial court's order, denying dismissal of the case and the disqualification of Fannie Willis and her office, right? So that's the Court of Appeals. They said, we've already considered this, so don't tell us it's improvident. We accepted it for a reason, so that we could change the outcome. Of course, as this court well knows, that has never been and is not now the law. That if it's just not clearly erroneous, the court of it was like, oh, well, I guess there's nothing we can do about this. I guess that's the end of that one. So Fannie Willis wins every appeal because she just says, you can't change the facts. Kind of idiotic. Now, as the joint application for appeal made plain, the vast majority, if not all of the issues raised in the appeals are issues of law, okay? Not fact, which is the point we made when we were reading Fannie's motion. She didn't even talk about the law. And issues of law, guess what? This court reviews de novo, which means brand new, as new. They review it like it's a new claim, not whether it's clearly erroneous. And previously here, we've shown the standards for appeals and different things are reviewed for, with different standards. If it's a question of law, the court looks at it with fresh eyes. Most of the issues on appeal involve the trial court's misinterpretation, McAfee's, or misapplication of the legal standards, not the trial court's factual findings, many of which actually favor us and undermine Fannie. Now, for those reasons, Fannie's focus on this clearly erroneous standard is largely irrelevant to the matters for litigation in these appeals. And in its 17-page diatribe of their little rant that we read here earlier, in support of their clearly erroneous standard, Fannie also ignores that there are several factual issues upon which the court expressly declined to make definitive findings, including whether they committed perjury. Judge didn't decide that. Said this court is not under an obligation to ferret out every instance of potential dishonesty from the witness because they total cowardly behavior. It's just cowardly. I hate to use that word, but it is. Like these guys, Fannie and Wade lied to this judge's face. And he wrote in his opinion, this court is not under an obligation to ferret out every instance of potential dishonesty. No, you're not. You're right. They lied to their spouses and everybody else in their offices. They lied to everybody else. Everywhere in their whole life. It's just a big fat lie. But they lied to you and your face, judge. That is your responsibility. You do have an obligation to that. And they punted it because it's just so pathetic. Anyways, makes my blood boil. So yeah, the court didn't dig into that and Fannie didn't include that in her motion. Now, even if the issues on appeal did involve a clearly erroneous standard, the state's argument that this fact requires this court to not hear the appeal is nonsensical. So Fannie says you can't even hear it. And you're saying, well, wait, well, how is the court of appeals going to decide what to do about it? They have to hear it before they can make a decision. No, you can't even hear it. So the clearly erroneous standard by definition is it's a standard of review. Like you have to hear it, Fanny, in order to decide if it was clearly erroneous, right? To reject it. Now, the fact that this case may invoke or involve that appellate standard is no reason to deny review. You might deny the appeal, but you don't deny the hearing of the appeal. Equally obvious, while the clearly erroneous standard is more difficult to satisfy than the de novo standard because they look at it with fresh eyes versus was it wrong, it is a standard of review on appeal for a reason. This court is empowered to and does reverse a trial court's findings when, after the hearing on the merits, the, it determines the trial court's factual findings are clearly erroneous. So that's how it works. Like, there is no appeals if you can't hear the appeals, like if the court is prohibited from even hearing it, in order to determine whether the standard was met. Now, simply stated, the state's motion is a calculated, disingenuous attempt to mislead this court for the obvious purpose of preventing the interlocutory appellate review, which is in the middle of the trial. Normally, criminal cases, we wait until it's over, until we have a conviction, we're done. Then we appeal it. But we're right in the middle of this thing because it relates to the disqualification of Fannie. Now, both the trial court, Trump's defense, Steve Sadow writes, in granting the certificate of immediate review from McAfee and this court, the Court of Appeals, in granting and accepting the appeal, they've already determined these issues are critical, okay? Both sides turn their keys. McAfee went in and said, yeah, it's a big deal. Court of Appeals went in and said, yeah, it's a big deal. Now, the trial court's error that we argue, says Trump's defense, in declining to disqualify Fannie is a structural error that would, if left uncorrected by the Court of Appeals, it would fatally infect all subsequent proceedings, and it would require a later reversal if they got a conviction. So we would be appealing this later after all these trials happened, and there would be a great waste of time. It would be a great expense to the courts. It'd be a great expense to the parties and the taxpayers. We've already wasted 700 grand on Nathan. Now, this court's decision to grant the interlocutory application was sound. You already made your decision. It was responsible, and it was appropriate. And so Fannie's Hail Mary motion should be denied. They say Fannie's thinly veiled attempt
attempt to request reconsideration of this is against the law. It's also premature. Without citing any actual law, case, court rule, or anything, Fannie is seeking a dismissal of this. There hasn't even been a full briefing on the merits yet. And as we know, the law says no appeal shall be dismissed except for these reasons. Now, none of these reasons apply here. All of our notices were timely filed. We filed them on time. We appealed the order appropriately. And consistent with the code, you can only dismiss when there's a lack of jurisdiction. They don't even allege that. They don't even say there was a lack of jurisdiction. They say that there was improvidence. But you know what, Judge? We looked up the rules. We tried to see if there was an improvidence justification in the code or in Rule 41. Couldn't find it. Now, while this court has on rare occasions dismissed interlocutory or discretionary appeals for improvidence on their own sua sponte, it's only exercised this argument after full briefings on the merits and with the benefit of oral argument if granted. None of that has happened here. Obviously, we've not had briefing nor oral argument at all. Now, Fannie, at the bottom of all this thing, the state's motion is at bottom. Is that a butt joke? Is a red herring. The state devotes its entire motion to the standard of review of the trial court's factual findings, right? It's all about facts. When all or substantially all of the issues that we talked about are legal issues subject to de novo, not clearly erroneous review. So for example, one of appellants, one of Trump's primary issues challenges the trial court's misinterpretation and application of this case. They say, Trump says, we challenge McAfee's interpretation and the application of this forensic misconduct standard about Fannie's legally improper speech and other established forensic prosecutorial misconduct, including fraud via lying to the court. Now, interpretation and application of the law are purely legal questions. So did this judge, McAfee, interpret the case appropriately? That's wholly distinct and deferential to the state's sole string citation of clearly erroneous standards of reviews. Okay, so string citations are when you see a bunch of those case titles back to back. They just drop a bunch of them back. So lay versus state. All of these would be assigned back to back. They looked up all the cases. They would say all the citations are stringing them together and there's just a bunch of them. Now, tellingly, the state's motion wholly ignores this forensic misconduct issue. They don't even talk about the legal issues. They didn't. They missed it. It also ignores the trial court's own admission by McAfee made in his order of a lack of certainty in its application of the law and his comments saying there wasn't any precedent for me to question the forensic misconduct standard. So McAfee says, look, you know, I don't know what to do. So here's what I'm going to do. Now, Trump's legal challenges do not depend on contesting the trial court's findings of fact. We don't care. Indeed, many of the trial court's factual findings are favorable to us and damning to Fannie Willis and her office. For example, the stinky odor of mendacity, describing Willis's conduct as a tremendous lapse in judgment, as though she had any in the first place, calling it unprofessional, calling her speech legally improper. The focus of these appeals will be the legal errors that McAfee committed, errors that this court has power to review and to decide. And so Sado, with Jennifer Little and Matt Winchester, says, the state has moved this court to act contrary to the law and to its own rules. It ignores, Fannie, that the issues to be raised in this appeal are legal issues. They're not factual issues. And that undercuts the logic of their own argument here. In short, Fannie's motion is unsupported by any relevant authority, has no basis in the law. The appellants, Trump, respectfully request that this court deny Fannie's motion to dismiss this case, respectfully submitted by Steve Sadow. Absolutely excellent. It was perfect because Fannie missed this entirely. In her motion, she didn't even mention these legal issues at all. She talked about clearly erroneous standards and said that the facts are already decided. And so this court can't go back and relitigate the facts. It was almost like a double jeopardy argument in some bizarre twisted attempt to try to get this appeal stopped because she wants to get this trial back on track. She's doing everything she can to get this thing done before the election. It's not going to happen because the Court of Appeals will accept it. And I think that she made a pretty big mistake in attempting to get it to dismissed here because it's going to, I think, show the Court of Appeals how problematic her office is. They're going to say, this is wild. We're now already accepting this and she's telling us we're crazy. So they may want to make some corrective action here. We'll see if they do. We're going to continue to cover it either way, my friends. We'll see what Fanny says in response. As our coverage continues, we thank you for subscribing and liking this video. We'll see you back here on the next one.